Hi guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make one of these. This is a carbide tipped straightening hammer. And I can't believe, I cannot believe how well this works and I cannot believe I didn't make one of these sooner. If you have a knife that has a warp in it after quenching, uh, clamp tempers might be a thing of the past. I mean, you can get some of the warp out using clamp tempers, but if you still have any warp remaining, this is the answer. I'm gonna show you how to make this. These are extremely simple to make. I'll leave links to everything that I use to make this in the description. Keep in mind, these carbide tipped, these carbide uh, insert, these carbide ball bearings here are kind of difficult to source. Uh, when I ordered this from Amazon, they only had two left and I couldn't find any other ones. So you might have to do some internet searching for these, but I'll leave links to the exact one that I purchased down below. So if you have problems with knives warping, especially air hardened steels, which are extremely difficult to straighten after quench, this guy is your answer. So first off, you'll need 3 8 inch tungsten carbide ball bearings. It's more economical to order a two pack, so I got two of them for about $13. Next, you'll need a ball peen hammer. I didn't already have one of the appropriate size, so I had to buy one. This one is a 16 ounce hammer. And I wouldn't say it's absolutely necessary to use a ball peen hammer. It's just easier to see the ball due to the shape of the peen when you're hammering. <coughs> Might have to rephrase that. Anyway, next I'm just going to grind a flat spot on the tip of the hammer. And this will allow me to center punch it much easier. You don't need a grinder to do this. You could do it just as easily with the file. Next you need to locate your drill chuck key which somehow goes missing every time you need to use the drill press. There it is. Then I'm just going to clamp the hammer in the drill press vise and take it over to the anvil to give it a good solid center punch. Now we're going to use a 3 8 inch drill bit to drill the hole for the ball bearing. You're going to need a quality drill bit for this, one that's designed to drill through hardened steel. If I can find it, I will leave a link to the exact drill bit I used down below. When you're drilling, drill this slow. Use an oil if you have to. Do not overheat the tip of the drill bit. That's what ruins drill bits, is overheating them. So go slow, use oil, keep the drill bit cool. Now my idea behind keeping the ball bearing in place is to drill a hole slightly deeper than the diameter of the ball bearing. Then use a punch to bend over the edges, keeping the ball in place. I'll also use some JB Weld to fill in any gaps underneath the ball bearing. It was actually so good I couldn't get the ball bearing back out without some trouble, even without epoxy or bending over the edges. Next I'll wipe everything down with acetone because we did use oil for the drilling and I will put a tiny dab of epoxy underneath the ball bearing to help fill in any gaps. Then we'll put the hammer in a vise and we'll use a punch to peen over the edges. I'm not even sure if that's the correct terminology, but it's fun to say. and we'll let it set overnight. So now it's time for the first test. So I just want to show you guys real quick exactly what we're doing. I'm going to exaggerate a lot here. But if your knife is bent this way, you're going to want to hammer on this side. And that'll actually stretch this side of the material to straighten it out. It's really that simple. Okay, so I sort of messed around with this for a little bit just to figure out the process, but our first blade is a piece of A2 tool steel. This knife has a slight warp in it, and you can see all I'm doing is hammering, sort of back and forth, trying to find exactly where the blade is bent, and then hammering on the opposite side to straighten it out. This is actually a pretty tedious process, but it happens really quick, so you gotta pay attention. Oh wow. Might have actually uh, gone a little bit too much. It's actually very easy to hammer too much on the one side. 
and warp it back in the other direction. So you may have to work it back and forth until you figure it out. That actually worked really well. That's amazing. So here we have a hardened piece of 01. This uh, blade was pretty straight before I started and I actually put a bend in it by hammering on this side and that'll put the bend in this direction. So in order to straighten it, we need to hammer on this side. So you want to hammer on. So if your blade is curved like this, you hammer on this side and it'll stretch the piece of material in this direction. Hopefully you can see we've got a rock in it, a bend. So in order to straighten it, I'm going to hammer right here. And actually just that little bit took most of it out. Still got a little bit. And look at that, we're straight again. That's amazing. So this is what the hammer does to the surface. The idea is to do this process right after quenching, and you can then remove all of the dimples when you finish grinding the bevels and the flats, leaving you with a perfectly straight blade. So I think some of you are going to be asking where this tool fits in with the rest of the blade straightening tools such as clamp tempering and so on and so forth. Uh, this is going to straighten just about any hardened steel. This is O1, the other piece we're using is A2. Um, especially with air hardening steels, it can be really difficult to straighten an air hardened steel after it's already hardened. A lot of times you just can't do it in the temper. I had a piece recently, it was a piece of CPM M4 that warped so bad on me. Well, it wasn't so bad. It was, it was very bad for a plate quench and I could not straighten it. I actually broke it in half trying to straighten it and this tool would have saved that night. I mean, I think that this tool is going to be worth its weight in, uh, in gold here because it's gonna save a lot of warped blades from the trash bin. Anyway, I can't believe how well this works and how quickly it works and how easy it works. I mean, I thought I was gonna to have to kind of manipulate it back and forth a bunch of times and, but no, I mean, I think it's easy to overdo it, meaning that you can hammer it too much and actually warp it in the other direction. So I think less is more, check it often, and it seems like it works extremely well. And again, I am, shocked at how well this works. If you're thinking about making one of these, I'll leave links to all of the uh, the stuff I use to make this down in the description. Anyway, hope this video helps and we'll see you in the next one. Really looking forward to use this. Found it. Oh, that's not it. There it is.